It's more than a little counterintuitive, but when you charge your Tesla battery, it actually gains weight. Yep, it actually gains weight, but how much? Plus, in a weird timing coincidence, there's new information about 4680 batteries out there today. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I have to admit, this is the kind of thing that I think about as I'm falling asleep at night. And so I actually went through this entire process like two nights ago, sort of thinking my way through about how much a battery would gain in weight when you charge it from empty to full. And I was actually relatively close to when I actually did the numbers this morning before I recorded this. Anyway, it may seem rather counterintuitive, but your battery actually does gain weight and it's based on first principles physics. And of course, if you're interested in the new leaked information information about the 4680 battery cells. I'm going to talk about that at the end of this video. But first, let's talk about battery weight gain. <laughs> Getting a little extra stuff around the belly, right? So let's say we have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's approximately what the Plaid Model S has. The Model 3, Model Y, etc., have around 75 kilowatt hours, you know, depending on which model you have. But 100 kilowatt hours is fine. As you're going to see, it's not that much weight, but it actually is a weight gain. So let's calculate how much weight do we actually add to the battery to fill it up. And to a lot of you, this may seem nonsensical because a battery weighs what it does, but there is a literal physical weight gain that happens when you charge a battery up. And also just to note this, it doesn't really matter what the battery pack weighs empty. Just like a gas tank, the gas tank weighs something, but it's what you're putting in it, right? It's a fixed weight, but you're putting in say 20 gallons of gas or something to fill up the tank. That weight is separate from the weight of the tank itself. But if you're interested for quick reference, a Model 3 battery pack is around 480 kilos and a Model S is around 545 kilograms. All right, so how are we gonna figure out this weight gain? Well, really all we need is a little bit of dimensional analysis and one very, very famous equation. That equation, of course, is Einstein's E equals MC squared, which relates energy and mass. And if you think about it, when you put energy into a battery, you're going to change the mass of that battery. And of course, C is the speed of light, the constant of the universe. All right, so first of all, we need to define what a joule is. A joule is a unit of energy in the metric system, the international standard system for everybody except the United States. <laughs> and the units of a joule are kilogram meter squared per second squared. And you might think that's a really weird unit for energy. But of course, if you look at E equals MC squared, C is meters per second, right? The speed of light. And if you square that, it's meters squared per second squared and mass is measured in kilos. So therefore you've got energy is kilogram meter squared per second squared. Also, one joule is equal to one watt second, not a watt hour, but a watt second. So that's how much energy is related. So therefore one watt hour is 3,600 joules because 3,600 seconds are in one hour, right? 60 times 60 gives you 3,600. So that gives you one watt hour equals 3,600 joules. And of course that makes one kilowatt hour 3.6 million joules because that's 1,000 times one watt hour. And then to round that out for our 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's 360 million joules. All right, next we need to know what C is, the speed of light. In meters per second, that's 299,792,458 meters per second. C squared is a really big number. It's 8.987 times 10 to the 16th, or about 89.8 quadrillion meters squared per second squared. And of course, if you look at the E equals MC squared equation, you can see that we're not going to be adding a ton of mass to this battery as we charge it up because C is a big number and C squared is a ridiculously huge number. So a little quick rearranging, we get mass equals energy divided by C squared is equal to 360 million divided by 8.987 times 10 to the 16th equals 0 0.00000000004 kilograms or 0 0.00000004 grams or four nanograms. 
or in other words, about five orders of magnitude less than the weight of a paperclip that you're adding to this battery as you charge it. But hey, four nanograms is not zero. That is something that's measurable. If you had a scale that was really, really well calibrated and you could carefully add energy to it, you would be able to measure an actual weight difference between the empty battery and the full battery. And that's a pretty amazing thing when you think about it. Because most people, you know, you think about something like a battery, like just a piece of mass, like it would never change the amount of mass that's in there, but it actually does. And it has to because of first principles thinking. If Einstein's right and E equals MC squared and <laughs> you know, a lot of stuff in the 20th and 21st century have proven this guy right. He was a pretty smart guy. But anyway, if that's correct, then you are actually adding weight to this battery. This is an experiment that you could do. You could take a hundred kilowatt hour battery, put it on a very, very sensitive scale, very carefully, you know, isolate it from the world and then charge it up and put in hundred kilowatt hours. So it's empty at one end and it's got hundred kilowatt hours of energy in it at the other end. You should measure about four nanograms of difference in weight between those two battery states. So you might think, well, that really doesn't matter at all, but I think it's really, really cool, you know, to actually think about physics and to use physics, a really simple equation and just kind of work through the numbers, do a little dimensional analysis and realize that you actually do have a physically noticeable amount of weight gain when you charge a battery up. So next time you go to like the supercharger or charge up your battery at home, you can be like, wow, I just, you know, made my, my Tesla a little bit fatter than it was before by four whole nanograms. All right, as for the 4680 battery cell leaked information, Stephen Mark Ryan reported on this. I went and looked at Tesla Motor Club and indeed it is there. So we don't know that this is true, but again, there's no real reason to assume that it's false. And it gives us some really interesting information. So, you know, take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. But as you can see from this graph, with the green being the good batteries and the red being the bad batteries, on January 22nd, they had 14 battery lines running in Fremont. And most of them were producing 90 plus percent good batteries. One of them was producing mostly bad batteries, but apparently that's because the people at Fremont were training the people at Texas to you know, create these batteries to ramp up the batteries. So they were experimenting and playing around with things and they produced a lot of bad batteries. But again, assuming we can believe the leaked photo and the information in it, they're achieving well over 90% yield now. And apparently the industry needs somewhere around 90 to 95% yield rate in order to feel like a battery is at, you know, full production ramp or something. There's always going to be some rejects when you make anything. I mean, manufacturing in general is that way. If you make silicon wafers, there's always rejects. If you make even things like clothing and stuff, you know, you can go to an outlet mall where they have imperfect clothes, which are rejected from quality control. So any kind of manufacturing thing only has a certain percentage of yield. And if they can get up to like 95 out of 100 batteries is good, that's a pretty darn good yield. The other piece of interesting information about all of this is that they have apparently around a million batteries stockpiled, which sounds really fantastic, but when when you break that down, it's not quite as good as what you might think. If the new cars are going to use around a thousand of these new cells, the 4680 battery cells, and that's a pretty reasonable estimate. Sandy Monroe, you know, guesstimated that it would be around 960 of these cells, which is a lot fewer. The, the 2170s is over 4,000 cells per you know, pack for a Model Y or something. So anyway, you know, 960 is a quarter of that or less, but still a thousand cells per car means that a million cells will only produce a thousand cars, which is not very much. So obviously a serious and sustained ramp is going to be needed to be able to keep producing these cars out of Texas, but hopefully Texas is ramping up their battery production right now. And Fremont, of course, will continue to create them at growing scale. The interesting thing is that news reports recently say that Tesla's reporting 4680 battery cells are not going to be the constraining factor in production this year. Though Berlin is not going to have them when they start Model Y production, only Texas is going to have that. But that's still super exciting news that they've been able to ramp up battery production to a commercial scale for completely new battery technology in the course of just like, you know, one to two years, somewhere in that range. They've ramped this thing from, you know, like showing that it could be possible to actually making it happen. That's really impressive work. And I really can't wait to see what happens with the 4680 battery cell Model Ys. They're going to have the structural battery pack, which means there's going to be fewer parts. The car should be lighter. There's more energy density in these new cells, so they should get longer range. And or what they may be able to do is only get away with like 800 of these cells or something and still get the same amount of range. So then they can actually make more cars. So it's all of this is really exciting stuff. And we should hopefully see these new cars coming out of Texas within like a month or so. <laughs> Everybody's saying before the end of the quarter, 
although it keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed. I think that, again, I'm still holding that Texas is going to be producing cars sooner than Berlin just because of the red tape. I don't know if anybody saw that picture on Twitter, but there's this picture of a ridiculous number of physical books that they're having to create, you know, print out regulations and all of this stuff and all the permitting process and everything. It, it's ridiculous on two counts. Number one, the amount of red tape they're having to go through. And number two, the fact that it's like still physical paper is kind of insane. Somebody actually quipped that these green environmentalist groups were cutting down an entire forest to print out all of their complaints about Tesla in Berlin. Anyway, exciting news. All all around about batteries today. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of stuff. A quick note again about the merch store. We have three new t-shirts. One is the 4680 battery cell, which really makes sense for today's episode. We also have the T-E-S-L-A meme from Elon Musk. And we also have a new one which says, success is one of the possible outcomes, which is a quote from Elon Musk from the SpaceX presentation. So check those out on the merch store. Link is in the description. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. You are wonderful. I really appreciate all of your support. You make this all possible. Thank you. And of course, if you want to join the club, definitely check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>